Shorthands like margin, padding, and background are fantastic because they let us be lazy and write less code to get the same thing done so we can work a little bit faster. But despite that, most of the time, I'd actually advise you not to use them. Hello, my front end friends. I'm so glad that you've come to join me for yet another video. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And one of the best ways to be less frustrated with CSS is to write more maintainable code. So let's jump right into the code. And we're going to start with this example here of why I think you shouldn't use shorthands. Uh, we'll see when shorthands are actually a good thing, as well as my favorite shorthand that actually overcomes some of these problems. So let's start off here where the, this is SAS. So if you're not really super familiar with what this looks like, don't worry too much. Uh, but here I have a background image and we're going to come in and apply a background image, regular CSS, and it should give us a background right here where I have this dark background. And um, it didn't work. Let's refresh. It still didn't work. Hmm, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is I used a utility class to set the background here, which is my inverted. And this utility class is my background. And here it is, my background color inverse. Again, don't worry, let's just come and make this like 333 so it doesn't look too fancy. And see it's updated there. And I have this color coming in, but my, my background image is not. And that's because this CSS is coming in after the other one. They're both a single class selector, they're equal specificity, whatever comes after wins. And this background shorthand, well, it's actually doing a lot more than just setting a background color. Because if we come and we look in here, there's the background. Let's make this bigger so we can really see it. And there it is. So we have our background right here. You can see it's setting the color, but it's also setting a whole bunch of other things to initial, including my background image. So my original background image right here is being overwritten. It's crossed off because this is being reset to initial. And what that means is I should have come here and used the longhand of background color. And now look at that, my image has come in and it's working as intended. Now, another issue that can come up from things like this is when we're dealing with our spacing. And you can see here, I have some text that's center aligned, but not um, aligned aligned, if you know what I mean. Um, and that's because this text here, if we come and look, it has, a max width on it of 45 CH it just prevents the, the line lengths from being too long. If you've never heard about CH, I'll link to a video in the description or there should be a card popping up as well. And uh, yeah, so we're limiting the max width of this. And that means the text is, let's just actually on here, we can just add a background of lime just so we can see it. And you can see that it's centered within that 45 CH, but the 45 CH itself isn't centered. And that's actually true for up here as well um, for both of these because my title here also has a max width of 30 ch on it so if we throw a background of lime on this one uh, you'll see that it's much closer to this side of the page than it is over here and so let's turn that off and let's come and see how we could fix that so i have some spacing classes on here and right now there is some space underneath here with a margin bottom two utility class that i've created and i could delete that and hit save just so you can see it update uh, and you can see it's glued. So I want to keep that space. We're going to hit my save there. Uh, but for both of these, we do want to also have them centered, right? And I have another utility class. We can see that right here of an MX auto, which is just my margin zero auto. And if I come over here, I can write MX auto. And this is just a, a common name. So that's why I'm using it here for MX auto. MX is for the X axis. And hit save on both of those. And it will center them, but you'll notice the space that was in between them has disappeared. Wait, why? Why is that space disappearing? Once again, this is shorthands coming to bite us. And I have an MX auto and a margin bottom of auto. And if we go and find that, we can see here that my margin bottom is, well, it's set to a margin block end, so we don't actually see it being crossed off. And I'll explain what this is in a second uh, if you're not familiar with it. But you can see here that my margin zero auto is forcing the zero on the top and the bottom, which is overwriting that space that I originally had. So if I turn this off, that space underneath comes back and then that space disappears. I want to have both of them. So how can I do that? Well, let's come into here. Uh, actually, let's just refresh that. So let's come on over to my spacing. And one thing is I could just make sure that this came before my, this is the one creating the bottom thing. So I could, you know, order my CSS, but I don't have, want to have to worry about what order things come in. 
I could just come here and do a margin left of auto and a margin right of auto. And while it's more verbose, you can see that it's now working because it's not overwriting the bottom margin that I've added to this element right here. Now, one shorthand that we could actually use in this situation if we wanted to is to use the margin inline and put auto on that and nothing will look like it's changed because nothing has changed. Because what margin inline is doing, it's a logical property that is only applying to the inline axis or you know, MX auto, it's applying to the X axis. Now it is a logical property, meaning if we were to do a left to right or a right to left language, it would apply, it's both the left and the right. But if ever you had a vertical writing mode, it would switch a little bit like flex direction switches, but that would sort of be what you'd want to happen anyway. And this is one of those shorthands I really, really like because it means I don't have to touch when, when I was, because when I was doing a margin zero auto, I was saying zero just so I would have nothing. I wanted like, I don't care about that. I just want the auto on the left and the right. Well, this accomplishes that and it does a really good job of it. And of course you might want to be wondering, well, what if I only want to target the top and the bottom? Well, that's where we do have the margin block. And so margin block, if I did a say 10 pixels, that would be margin top and a margin bottom of 10 pixels. It would apply to both. And then we have a margin block end, which is only on the bottom and a margin block start, which would only be on the top. If you'd like to know more about logical properties, I have talked about it in a video before and it will be linked down in the description. And just continuing off of there, you see the, I have these cards that have some like a hover effect on them, which we can turn off on mobile. Um, but with that hover effect, I'm using some positioning absolute, and that's where my favorite shorthand property comes, which is on my cards here. And you can see I have a position absolute, and right now they're set to a bottom of zero. And for the moment, I am going to turn off the transform uh, so they don't actually disappear, just so we don't we can just see them all the time on there. And instead of a bottom of zero, uh, let's just do an inset of zero. An inset is a shorthand, it's a logical property for top, bottom, left, and right. And you can see it's covering my entire one because they're all set to zero. What's interesting with the inset shorthand, it's the only shorthand that allows you to explicitly omit properties. And I know like say you have a font shorthand, like you don't have to put them all, or if you have the background shorthand, you don't have to list them all. But with inset, you do have to list them. And you can do that by using the auto keyword. So I knew auto for the top and then zero, zero, zero. And the auto in this case is, is, is as if I didn't declare it at all. So if we do that, it goes back to how I have it because I'm not declaring the top, but I am declaring the bottom right and left. And that sort of leads us to when I think you should be using shorthands, which are in the cases like here where I want both the left and the right. Or maybe you want to just use the margin shorthand and you need to declare all four sides. So of course, if you're doing all of them or a border, you're using your border shorthand because you need a border on all the sides, the shorthand makes a lot of sense but on especially the font property and the background property, they can actually cause so much more trouble than they're worth because, and even the, like the font one, unless you know the specific order things need to go in, it's kind of annoying. Whereas the border one, at least, at least if you're setting a border, you can just sort of mix it up and it doesn't matter what order things are in. And while some of these that I looked at, you might be going, Kevin, I'm never, I've never run into that. It's not gonna be a problem. If you're always using shorthands, I guarantee you one day it's gonna come back to bite you and you're just gonna be like, oh, and then you sort of have to go back and fix your code and. Declare things you need to be declaring. Don't use properties that add extra declarations to what you need that are sort of hidden away within the shorthand because they do come back, they do cause you issues. And if you're curious about the project that I was working on in this video, it is actually part of a new course that I'm working on called Beyond CSS. If you'd like to sign up for updates as that course launch approaches, the link to it is in the description just below. And during this video, I did mention several other videos. So if you'd like to check out any of those, there is a playlist that has them all right here, or once again, the links in the description. And with that, a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stewart, and Tim, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.